Good evening, everyone. This is Les Smith. I'm with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this evening's um, informational meeting concerning the Wolverine Worldwide Perimeter Monitoring Response Activity Plan. Before we bring on tonight's first uh, speaker, which is going to be um, it's going to be Karen Voris from the Eagle Grand Rapids uh, District Office, I want to go over some uh, housekeeping with you. Um, as you see here on the screen here, uh, we'll have a quick introduction. We're going to have the presentation by Karen to talk about the response activity plan. Uh, following the presentation on the response activity plan, we will move into a question and answer session. Um, Karen and I will both be providing you with ways uh, to submit written comment um, on the response activity plan and also provide you with uh, Karen's contact information. Uh, all of your lines are muted, which means hopefully you are hearing me, and um, but um, I can't hear you. So if you have questions for uh, me or the uh, our, our presenter tonight, you can type your question in the Q&A box um, located in the webinar control panel. Um, I also want to remind you all that uh, we are recording this webinar um, so that you can view it at a later date. Um, here are some ways that you'll be able to provide comments. And again, you will see this information again during Karen's presentation. Um, so if you've already had a chance to look at the document, you don't have to wait um, until a certain point to type in your question or comment. You can uh, write it in um, in the question and answer box tonight. And you can also email um, your comments to the eagle-rrd-howstreet at michigan.gov. And Karen's mailing address, street address, has also been provided here for you. And with that, I'm going to step out of the way and hand the microphone over to Karen Vors. She is project manager with the Remediation and Redevelopment Division in the Grand Rapids District Office. And Karen, the mic is yours. All right. Thanks, Les. I will share my screen here once it pops up. Let's see, yes. So you should be seeing my presentation now. Hopefully less, is it showing? Yes, we are, yes we are. Great, all right. I will um, turn on my little pointer, laser pointer, so that will help tonight. All right, good evening everyone. Thanks for joining us on this beautiful fall evening. Uh, the sun is looking really nice out there. So hopefully we won't take up too much of your time, but we wanted to, to just talk tonight and discuss the uh, Wolverine GZA's uh, response activity plan for the perimeter well monitoring network that was submitted under the consent decree. Again, my name's Karen Vors. I'm the project manager and environmental quality analyst in the Grand Rapids district office overseeing Wolverine's response activities. And also joining me, the, who's going to be presenting some of the slides is district geologist, Mark Worrell, who also um, helps oversee Wolverine's response actions. All right, so again, I'm gonna be a little broken record for those of you who may not be familiar with the site. I know many of you are, um, but for some that aren't, it's good just to kind of recap um, how we got to where we are. And so on February 19th, 2020, which feels like a long time ago, but really it was only seven months ago, um, the consent decree between the state of Michigan, um, Plainfield and Algoma townships and Wolverine worldwide became effective um, on the 19th. So that was approved by the US district judge. And um, this document really serves just as the Holy Grail, the framework for all future PFAS response activities um, that Wolverine is required to conduct in what's called the North Kent study area. And they're required to conduct these under state oversight, so under our Eagle oversight. And so you'll see on this slide, the graphic which depicts the North Kent study area. Um, that's the geographic area that is governed by the consent decree. And it's roughly 25 square miles in area, you know, goes as far north as 12 mile, um, expands down south to the Grand River, 
west over to Pine Island and east all the way down to kind of uh, downtown Rockford area. And so there are some, you know, we can break it into different groups, some basic requirements that are um, discussed in the consent decree. The tonight's meeting really is gonna just focus on the perimeter monitoring response activity plan, which is discussed in section 7.9 of the um, consent decree and appendix N. Um, as you'll see, you know, there's many other obligations that Wolverine has for other groundwater investigations, for residential well resampling, filter operation and maintenance, and uh, provision of uh, municipal water expansion, as well as groundwater surface water interface investigations, which we've had previous um, public meetings to discuss those. Um, so if you know, you have any questions about this plan um, as we're going through this or as you're reading it on your own, um, we'll be sharing my contact information and you can ask myself and Mark um, any clarifying questions or anything um, as you're going through this. Also wanted to note that this response activity plan is posted online at our on our website, on the House Street website, um, which is at www.michigan.gov forward slash Belmont. And hard copies of the report have also been printed out and provided to the local municipalities. So, um, you know, if you know people or yourself, if you're calling, listening into this, um, you don't have access to a computer, you can see, um, go to um, Plainfield Township Hall or Algoma Township Hall or the city of Rockford and request to review a hard copy of this document during the public comment period, which lasts until October 24th, which we'll get into as well. So appendix, specifically appendix N of the consent decree um, kind of laid out the framework for the perimeter well slash perimeter monitoring um, statement of work. And basically in the consent decree, if you read it, you'll see that the objective of the perimeter monitoring well network is to install a perimeter well network to monitor the potential migration and threat posed by PFAS compounds in groundwater to drinking water wells outside municipal water areas. So that's really the main objective of this response activity plan. Um, you'll see on this slide the um, kind of outline again of the North Kent study area, that 25 square mile area. And you'll see some parcels that are indicated with red highlighting, um, purple highlighting, or blue. So the red represents parcels that are receiving municipal water um, based on the consent decree. Purple are parcels that will remain on drinking water wells. They're, they are referred to as what's called filter areas under the consent decree. And then the light blue are existing municipal water parcels. So they already were hooked up to Plainfield um, Township water as of the effective date of this. And so really the purpose of the perimeter monitoring well network is to use existing wells, to use monitoring wells that are part of other response activity plans and then additional wells that will be installed um, to kind of monitor the plume at the edges of the municipal water area or on the edges of the plumes that are in the direction of the filter areas. So while not all perimeter wells are perfectly on the edges of municipal water areas that you'll see, they're still put in places that are going to monitor the plume that is within the municipal water area. So if it does start moving towards um, a filter area, that's where they're placed at. So between the plume, the groundwater contamination and the filter area, you'll, you'll see that on a figure, but just kind of wanted to note that here. And again, Appendix N, um, which was a part of the consent decree, um, normally consent decrees are not publicly noticed, um, but in this case, uh, we knew the public wanted a chance to review and comment on that. So a public comment period was provided um, during this time. So this appendice was uh, publicly commented on during that public comment period back in February. So again, Appendix N, this is what it looked like. It was the perimeter wells, perimeter monitoring statement of work had kind of the proposed investigation locations. 
And so what the response activity that's subject to this comment period has that's different is it contains a lot more details, the conceptual site model, it has figures and cross sections and more information on sampling procedures and protocols. And so on here, we just have a, an example of a figure that we're gonna be discussing uh, coming up here that shows the ISO concentrations of PFAS and groundwater um, in the area. So that's the kind of information that is included in the response activity plan. So for the remaining um, portion of tonight's presentation, we're gonna focus in on um, of the response activity plan, the conceptual site model, which is discussed in section two of the report, you'll see when you review it. Um, and then also the proposed statement of work, section three, just kind of going over the various proposed well locations. Um, it has a very similar format as the other response activity plans that have been reviewed previously. You know, starting with an introduction, going into the CSM or conceptual site model, then moving into the proposed statement of work. It has discussion on the investigation methodology, methodology sampling and analytical procedures, um, data QA, QC, quality assurance, quality control, and of course, anticipated schedule. So um, right now, I'm going to hand over the presentation um, to uh, Mark Worrell, district geologist. He's gonna go over some of the conceptual site model of the area. So again, this, this figure might be familiar to those of you that have attended uh, these public presentations. So th this is kind of the study area. We have the, the tannery site in downtown Rockford along the Rogue River, but we also have the House Street disposal area. Um, and, and we know of its existence from its uh, regulatory nature as a licensed disposal facility. But we also have the woven jewel source area, which is based on such things as uh, groundwater quality, um, uh, unique compounds and soils that are indicative of a source, uh, as well as information from, from, from locals who had lived in the area. So on the map, you see the blue arrows, which represent the plumes. The round dots are residential well samples, and the triangles are monitoring well samples. The, uh, um, and the monitoring wells, white, black, purple, or red indicate exceedances. Um, similarly, for drinking water, red indicates an exceedance. Uh, yellow uh, indicates a detection above method detection level, and green is, is non detect or below method detection level. So, Unfortunately, both of these sites are on what's called a groundwater divide. That means groundwater is going to flow in multiple directions. In the case of, of House Street, we have the principal plume that goes southeast um, towards the historic area of Belmont and the Rogue River and, and, and undercuts the, the Rogue River and impacts areas east of, of that um, uh, to the southeast, kind of towards the confluence of the, of the Grand and, and the Rogue River. But we also have a, a plume that goes to the northwest and several minor subplumes that either come off the site itself or apparently break off the, the main plume uh, based on, on local geology and hydrogeology. Up at the woven jewel source area, we have several main plumes. Uh, we have a plume that more or less goes to the northwest towards the Rogue River. We have uh, uh, significant plumes that go to the northeast towards the Rogue River and significant plumes that go to the southeast. Um, and unfortunately, the Rogue River does encircle the whole area, and that means that multiple plumes are going to be interacting with the Rogue River. Next slide, please. So in, in the response activity plan, this is Wolverine's representation uh, of, of the contamination area. And this is an ISO contour map, so it's, it's based on a lot of modeling. The... Uh, uh, Dots uh, on there, the, the pink dots are, are monitoring wells associated with Woven Jewel. The blue are monitoring wells associated with House Street. And, and again, this is a highly modeled uh, uh, representation of the contamination. I, I wouldn't say that Wolverine necessarily agrees with it. Um, we would uh, prefer to not indicate the impact as, as disconnected blobs because that's not the way contamination acts in the environment. 
but this is the representation uh, within the uh, response activity plan uh, that, that indicates in part why the well locations were chosen for the perimeter wells. So, and I'm not gonna go over this slide in a lot of detail, but this is a representation of the perimeter wells uh, as laid out. Now, if you're concerned that you see just a few wells here, understand that we also have the investigative wells, we have the GSI wells, all these act kind of holistically to give us a big picture of what's going on in the area. But per definition, these are strictly the perimeter wells. Also, each of these locations isn't one well, but there might be nested sets or multiple wells at that location. Historically, I think we've had up to seven wells installed at one location uh, in the study. So all these wells, the wells indicated here, as well as the investigative wells and the GSI wells, will act together to give us a good idea of what's going on. And additionally, this isn't the only wells that may be installed. This is the first round of wells. And if the results come back, indicating that additional drilling and investigation is necessary, then that will occur as well. So don't think of this as the be all end all, but this is kind of the, the beginning of thought for investigating that perimeter of the study area. So this is again from, from the plan. This is a, a representation of, uh, of, of the wells that are proposed. And you see some of the investigative wells there as, as triangle, green triangles, the, some of the proposed perimeter monitoring as squares. And again, if you see gaps in there, it may be because it's either areas that are flowing into municipal water areas or, or there's other wells that will de facto act as, as in, in aiding and in, in coming up with the big picture. And again, if, if these wells come back with less than satisfactory results, additional mobilizations and drilling events may have to occur. But we kind of see, we go from House Street to the Northwest, we go all the way to the Rogue River, down across the Rogue River uh, uh, to the Southeast where the confluence of the Grand and the Rogue are, as well as, as the wells they're gonna be associated with Woven Jewel to the Northwest and, and to the East. And again, if you if this if this is if you want to look at this more detail, as, as Karen has mentioned, the, the the copies of the report are available online as well as physical copies uh, elsewhere. It might be a little bit easier to see than a, a quick presentation. Yeah. Computer. And it is hard, you know. I think we will be um, just you know reaching out to GUZA as one of our comments on this, just including a map that will show all of the kind of wells on one map. It gets really busy, which is why this map is, is easier to use just to kind of try to show the perimeter wells, the existing wells that are gonna be used as perimeter, some of the investigation wells that are earmarked as perimeter and investigation wells, but there are many more monitoring wells not shown on this figure that will be installed. So if you look at area five, um, area 6, area 11 and 12, or area 19 response activity plans that were previously discussed, you'll kind of see some more uh, boring locations, uh, monitoring well, nested well sets um, on those figures. So basically the anticipated schedule for this is once, um, you know, uh, Wolverine receives our comments and whatnot, they're able to go and um, they probably already are working on obtaining access for a lot of these. Um, they're gonna, you know, the field team will prioritize locations that where access has been given. So um, based on this work, on the other four response activity plans that have groundwater investigation occurring, there's gonna be a lot of wells to pick from to keep um, drill rigs moving along. Um, specific to this perimeter well, um, response activity plan, the, the work will be completed over the next 11 months. And then once the well network is fully installed, um, they will be doing four quarters of sampling um, of the, the monitoring network as a whole. And then um, Wolverine's consultant, GZA and Eagle will meet to discuss the data, and look at the other information we're receiving from the other um, monitoring wells that have been installed and sampled to see um, if any additional wells need to be installed or to see what next steps will be. 
Also something to note um, in section 7.12 of the consent decree, there's reference to a completion report um, associated with the perimeter monitoring. And that's gonna be the report where uh, that will include the long-term maintenance and the long-term monitoring plan after the first quarter, the first four years, or first four quarters of sampling. So that's where that will be discussed. So if you're wondering why it wasn't in this plan, that's where it will be. So the next steps of this uh, response activity plan, as many of you know, will we'll accept written comments through October 24, 2020, had a 30-day comment period, um, which started on September 24th. So we'll go through October 24th. Um, written comments can be emailed to our eagle, eagle-rrd-housestreet at michigan.gov email box um, through October 24th. Um, they can also be mailed to me, which you'll get that address again. Um, after we receive public comments, we review those and prepare a responsiveness summary document um, that basically summarizes all the public comments we received and EGLE's response to those. And those responsive documents are also posted on our michigan.gov forward slash Belmont website. That's our House Street website. Um, we also send a copy to people who provided comments, just letting them know that it's completed when it's completed and when it's going to be posted. And then um, after the, all of that, and we've reviewed the comments, taken those into consideration, we then complete our review and finalize that in a letter back to Wolverine with any comments that we have. Um, and again, those letters uh, we send to Wolverine and then they are also posted under project documents and identified on our um, Belmont website. So as you can see, we've made it down to the bottom of this list this past summer and fall. Um, we are on the last response activity plan for the year that will be publicly noticed. Um, and so again, we have you have until October 24th to get those comments in. Um, all the rest of these uh, previous response activity plans have gone through this process. Um, I believe we had four other public comment periods, those are all posted on our website, links to um, draft documents, final documents. And we're in the process of updating that to get everything kind of organized on the table now that we have all these kind of in and, and at different parts in the process. So if you ever have any questions on that, you can reach out to us. Um, and again, everything's posted right on that, www.michigan.gov forward slash Belmont website. So again, to be a broken record, go ahead and send us your comments to our House Street uh, email address there listed. And then you can also um, by mail send us written comments if you prefer snail mail um, to 350 Ottawa Avenue, Northwest Unit 10, Grand Rapids, Michigan 49503. Just make a note again, this is for the perimeter monitoring well response activity plan. And if anyone ever has any questions for Mark or I, uh, just really about the consent decree in general or any other investigation, area geology, questions about filters, questions about different schedules, um, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to me, my uh, phone number is listed on the slide at 616-439-8008, or you can shoot me an email at vorsk, V-O-R-C-E-K, at michigan.gov, and we can work with you to get any questions answered that you have. So that really, um, we try to make it short and sweet and as straightforward as possible to help with your review of the response activity plan. So Les, any other comments? Thank you, Karen, and thank you, Mark, uh, for a wonderful presentation. Um, we are just want to remind everyone, uh, if you have questions tonight for our panel um, of Karen and Mark, and uh, we have a few other staff here uh, that are available to help answer questions. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I just want to remind individuals here that um, we've got about 
about 14 people on today. So I uh, just want to let you know. And uh, you can type your question in the Q&A box. Um, if you want to raise your hand, we can try unmuting your line if you want to ask a question to our panel today. And um, we are happy that you uh, came to spend this bit of time with us uh, this evening. Um, while we're waiting for more questions, Karen, I do have one so far, and I'm going to go ahead and read that. Um, before I do, I just want to let uh, our attendees know that I put in the chat um, box for them is the uh, web address to uh, to impart um, so they can reach the uh, House Street uh, website. And I also put in the chat box um, the Eagles, Eagles YouTube channel web address so you can go back and look at the other um, if you have interest in those, the previous um, public meetings that were held um, in this series of public meetings related to the response activity plan. So I've stalled long enough. I have two questions <laughs> now. So um, now I'm up to three. All right. So Karen, first question. And if uh, if our um, panelists, Mark, if you could join, uh, turn your camera on and yep. um, join uh, uh, Karen here, that'd be great. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, now, first question here says, um, Karen, are you taking questions? Yes, Karen will be taking questions during the webinar. <laughs> um, after the installation of the wells and the quarterly sampling, does it end? No, it doesn't end. That just kind of puts a bookmark on, bookmark on when um, the consultant has to meet with us to go over the data so we can determine an appropriate sampling schedule moving forward and then also discuss again, um, what's gonna be included uh, in the completion report that will be due that kind of has the long-term monitoring. Okay. Um, when does the 11th month long clock start? The 11th 11, the 11 long clock start? Does it start today? Does it start at a different time? So my understanding is that it starts once um, Wolverine receives our approval or you know our comments back so once the final um they get approval with conditions or if we deny it then we had to go back and forth with um, our disagreements but it's once they kind of get the go ahead from the agency to start that work um is is where when the 11 months starts okay uh thank you uh karen um yes we have another question for you Concerns have been expressed about the plume undercutting the Grand River. If well HSPMW-RI-112, I hope you understood which well that is. Okay. Um, if that particular <laughs> well um, detects something, will wells be added across the river? Hmm, I guess I'd want to look at the map just to kind of orientate myself a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you know our perimeter wells are showing um, that there is contamination um, that is moving further on, um, there is provisions in the consent decree for more work to be done um, to address that. I don't know if anyone else, Danielle or anyone else needs to add anything on that. Um, everyone should keep in mind that the consent decree only resolves the issues within the North Kent study area. So to the extent that there are issues that are outside the North Kent study area, which I believe is bounded, Karen can correct me if I'm wrong, by the Grand River, um, then those issues would not be addressed by the consent decree. Those would be separate. So they could be addressed outside of the consent decree through a different mechanism. Yes. Or investigation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So far, those are the only questions so far. Um, I added another um, web link while we were um, addressing that question um, that's more direct to the House Street Belmont um, um, uh, website. So I've provided three um, addresses there for um, getting additional information. Uh, it's just 630. Um, we still have several of our attendees are still with us. So 
Um, Karen or Mark, do you have any, you know, additional thoughts you'd like to add uh, concerning the, this particular response activity plan? Um, you know, just for me, it, it's, uh, you know, if anyone ever wants to, um, if you don't feel comfortable asking or writing in during this meeting, um, feel free to pick up a phone or, or shoot us over an email and Mark and I would be more than happy um, to go over those questions. And, you know, if we don't know the answers right away, we have a lot of phone of friends and uh, resources that uh, at our disposal to help get you those answers. Okay. And thanks for joining us tonight. All no, right. <laughs> All right. Yes, I don't have any new questions that have come in. I'm trying to stall, but I don't keep, keep stalling if there's no one, no additional questions. So, um, Karen, I'll, you got thank yous. I just wanted to let you know, oh, uh, Karen and Mark. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, Karen can be reached at the contact information on the screen. I'll leave it up for a few more seconds if you want to take your phone out and uh, take a picture of that. Uh, this uh, webinar is re being recorded. It will be shared on our Eagle YouTube channel and the uh, probably the Impart uh, website as well. And um, once this uh, webinar recording is available, uh, we'll get a note out to you. I'll let you know that it's there. And um, yes, there are new, new questions, no new questions. So uh, with that, we just want to thank you again for uh, taking the time to spend uh, with us. And uh, with that, that will conclude tonight's webinar. And please have an enjoyable evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.